Constipation Constipation is a condition in which a person has uncomfortable or infrequent bowel movements. A person is considered to be constipated when bowel movements result in passage of small amounts of stooly. They are hard, dry, usually fewer than three times a week. Chronic constipation is infrequent bowel movements or difficult passage of stools that persists for several weeks. Treatment for chronic constipation depends in part on the underlying cause. However, in some cases, a cause is never found. To understand how to prevent constipation, it helps to know what causes it. As food passes through your colon, your body absorbs the water from it, and what's left forms into stooly. Your muscles move it through the colon to the rectum, where you pass it. When this movement slows down, your colon draws too much water. Stools get dry and hard to pass, causing constipation. The problem often happens because of a low fiber or high fat diet, lack of exercise, and not drinking enough fluids. Certain medications, not going to toilet when you feel the urge, laxative abuse, and pregnancy can also lead to constipation. Persistent, chronic constipation may also be a symptom of more serious conditions. It includes inflammatory bowel disease, colorectal cancer, diabetes, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, depression, or an underactive thyroid gland. Bowel habits tend to vary with age and circumstances. Bottle-fed babies, for example, tend to have firmer stools and more bouts of constipation than breastfed babies. Children become constipated when they start school, because they are embarrassed to ask permission to use the toilet. Toddlers often become constipated during toilet training if they are unwilling or afraid to use the toilet. Being sensitive to pain, children may avoid the toilet if they have minor splits or tears in the anus from straining or other irritations. Kids can also become constipated from consuming certain foods, such as dairy products. Older people, especially those who are more sedentary, tend to develop constipation more often. Medications that can cause constipation include narcotics, diuretics, iron supplements, antacids, and drugs for blood pressure, seizures, and depression. Blockages in the colon or rectum may slow or stop stool movement. Causes include tiny tears in the skin around the anus, anal fissure, a blockage in the intestines, bowel obstruction, colon cancer, narrowing of the colon, bowel stricture, other abdominal cancer that presses on the colon, rectal cancer, rectal cancer, rectum bulge through the back wall of the vagina, rectoseal, problems with the nerves around the colon and rectum, Neurological problems can affect the nerves that cause muscles in the colon and rectum to contract and move stool through the intestines. Causes include, damage to the nerves that control bodily functions, autonomic neuropathy, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, spinal cord injury, stroke, difficulty with the muscles involved in elimination, problems with the pelvic muscles involved in having a bowel movement may cause chronic constipation. These problems may include, the inability to relax the pelvic muscles to allow for a bowel movement, an isthmus. Pelvic muscles that don't coordinate relaxation and contraction correctly, dysenergia, weakened pelvic muscles. Conditions that affect hormones in the body, hormones help to balance the fluids in your body. Diseases and conditions that upset the balance of hormones may lead to constipation, including Diabetes, overactive parathyroid gland, hyperparathyroidism, pregnancy, underactive thyroid, hypothyroidism. Risk factors, factors that may increase your risk of chronic constipation include Being an older adult, being a woman, being dehydrated, eating a diet that's low in fiber, getting little or no physical activity. Taking certain medications, including sedatives, opioid pain medications, some antidepressants or medications to lower blood pressure. Having a mental health condition such as depression or an eating disorder. In children and babies, constipation can sometimes affect children and babies. If a newborn does not pass meconium, their first solid stool, within 48 hours of birth, they may have Hirschsprung's disease. This is a condition where certain nerve cells are missing from part of the large intestine. Stool is unable to move forward in the affected area of colon, which causes a backup. 
a healthcare provider will usually be able to spot these symptoms and recommend surgery as treatment. In most cases, the outlook is good for babies born with this condition. Young infants, if a breastfed baby goes a week without passing stool, this is not usually a problem. Breastfed infants do not usually experience constipation. However, if parents or caregivers have concerns about a baby's bowel movements, they can seek medical advice. More commonly, constipation can occur when an infant first starts taking formula feeds, during weaning, during potty training, at times of stress. If infant experiences constipation while consuming formula feed, they may benefit from drinking extra water between feeds. Baby food Parents and caregivers should not add extra water to the formula, however. If the infant is already consuming solids, they may need more fiber and water in their diet. Fruit can be a good option. However, do not force children to eat if they do not want to, as this can cause or add to stress. During potty training, constipation can occur if a child feels stressed, especially if other changes are occurring, such as starting at nursery. Giving the child plenty of time to empty their bowels may help. Apart from not passing stool, some symptoms that indicate constipation in children include a firm or distended abdomen, low energy, reduced appetite, irritability. According to one source, around 40% of women experience constipation during pregnancy. This can result from hormonal changes, physical changes, such as when the uterus presses on the intestines, dietary or physical activity changes. Many women take iron supplements during pregnancy. These can contribute to constipation and other changes in bowel habits. Symptoms, signs and symptoms of chronic constipation include Passing fewer than three stools a week Having lumpy or hard stools, straining to a bowel movements Feeling as though there's a blockage in your rectum that prevents bowel movements Feeling as though you can't completely empty the stool from your rectum Needing help to empty your rectum, such as using your hands to press on your abdomen and using a finger to remove stool from your rectum. Constipation may be considered chronic if you've experienced two or more of these symptoms for the last three months. Complications Complications of chronic constipation include Swollen veins in your anus, hemorrhoids. Straining to have a bowel movement may cause swelling in the veins in and around your anus. Torn skin in your anus anal fissure a large or hard stool can cause tiny tears in the anus stool that can't be expelled fecal impaction chronic constipation may cause an accumulation of hardened stool that gets stuck in your intestines intestine that protrudes from the anus rectal prolapse straining to have a bowel movement can cause a small amount of the rectum to stretch and protrude from the anus prevention of constipation the following can help you avoid developing chronic constipation. Include plenty of high fiber foods in your diet, including beans, vegetables, fruits, whole grain cereals and bran. Eat fewer foods with low amounts of fiber such as processed foods and dairy and meat products. Drink plenty of fluids. Stay as active as possible and try to get regular exercise. Try to manage stress. Don't ignore the urge to pass stool. Try to create a regular schedule for bowel movements, especially after a meal. Make sure children who begin to eat solid foods get plenty of fiber in their diets. How is constipation diagnosed? The tests performed by a doctor will depend on the duration and severity of the constipation, since most persons experience constipation at one time or another. The doctor will also take into account the patient's age, and whether there is blood in the stool, recent changes in bowel habits, or weight loss. Diagnosing constipation may include Medical history, the doctor will ask for a description of the constipation, including duration of symptoms, frequency of bowel movements, and other information to help determine the cause of the constipation. Physical examination a physical examination may also include a digital rectal examination DRE, in which the doctor inserts a glove, lubricated finger into the rectum to evaluate the tone of the muscle that closes off the anus. This examination also helps detect tenderness, obstruction, blood, amount and caliber of stool, and if enlargement of the rectum is present. Other diagnostic tests may include abdominal x-ray, lower GI, 
gastrointestinal, series, also called barium enema. A lower GI series is a procedure that examines the rectum, the large intestine, and the lower part of the small intestine. Fluid called barium is given into the rectum as an enema. It is a metallic, chemical, chalky, liquid used to coat the inside of organs so that they will show up on an X-ray. An X-ray of the abdomen shows strictures, narrowed areas, obstructions, blockages, and other problems. Colonoscopy Colonoscopy is a procedure that allows the doctor to view the entire length of the large intestine. It can often help identify abnormal growths, inflamed tissue, ulcers, and bleeding. It involves inserting a colonoscope, a long, flexible, lighted tube, in through the rectum up into the colon. The colonoscope allows the doctor to see the lining of the colon, remove tissue for further examination. It may possibly help to treat some problems that are discovered. Sigmoidoscopy A sigmoidoscopy is a diagnostic procedure that allows the doctor to examine the inside of a portion of the large intestine. It is helpful in identifying the causes of diarrhea, abdominal pain, constipation, abnormal growths, and bleeding. A short, flexible, lighted tube, called a sigmoidoscope, is inserted into the intestine through the rectum. The scope blows air into the intestine to inflate it and make viewing the inside easier. Colorectal Transit Study This test shows how well food moves through the colon. The patient swallows capsules containing small markers which are visible on X-ray. The patient follows a high-fiber diet during the course of the test. The movement of the markers through the colon is monitored with abdominal X-rays taken for 3 to 7 days after the capsule is swallowed. Anorectal Function Tests These tests diagnose constipation caused by an abnormal functioning of the anus or rectum. Treatment for constipation Treatment for constipation usually begins with diet and lifestyle changes to increase the speed at which stool moves through your intestines. If those changes don't help, your doctor may recommend medications or surgery. Diet and lifestyle changes, your doctor may recommend the following changes to relieve your constipation. Increase your fiber intake. Adding fiber to your diet increases the weight of your stool and speeds its passage through your intestines. Slowly begin to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables each day. Choose whole grain breads and cereals. Your doctor may recommend a specific number of grams of fiber to consume each day. In general, aim for 14 grams of fiber for every 1000 calories in your daily diet. A sudden increase in the amount of fiber you eat can cause bloating and gas, so start slowly and work your way up to your goal over a few weeks. Exercise most days of the week. Physical activity increases muscle activity in your intestines. Try to fit an exercise most days of the week. If you do not already exercise, talk to your doctor about whether you are healthy enough to start an exercise program. Don't ignore the urge to have a bowel movement. Take your time in the bathroom, allowing yourself enough time to have a bowel movement without distractions and without feeling rushed. Laxatives Several types of laxatives exist. Each works somewhat differently to make it easier to have a bowel movement. The following are available over the counter. Fiber supplements. Fiber supplements add bulk to your stooly. Bulky stools are softer and easier to pass. Fiber supplements include psyllium, calcium polycarbophyll and methyl cellulose. Stimulants. Stimulants including bisacodyl and senicides cause your intestines to contract. Osmotics. Osmotic laxatives help stool move through the colon by increasing secretion of fluid from the intestines and helping to stimulate bowel movements. Examples include oral magnesium hydroxide, magnesium citrate, lactulose, polyethylene glycol. Lubricants. Lubricants such as mineral oil enable stool to move through your colon more easily. Stool softeners. Stool softeners such as docusate sodium and docusate calcium moisten the stool by drawing water from the intestines. Enemas and suppositories. Tap water enemas with or without soap suds can be useful to soften stool and produce a bowel movement. Glycerin or bisacodyl suppositories also aid in moving stool out of the body by providing lubrication and stimulation. Other medications. If OTC medications don't help, your doctor may recommend a prescription medication especially if you have irritable bowel syndrome. Medications that draw water into your intestines. 
a number of prescription medications are available to treat chronic constipation. Lubiprostone, linaclotide and flacanotide work by drawing water into your intestines and speeding up the movement of stooly. Serotonin 5-hydroxytryptamine 4 receptors, percalipride helps move stool through the colon. Peripherally acting mu opioid receptor antagonists, Pomoras. If constipation is caused by opioid pain medications, Pomoras such as naloxagol and methylnaltrexone reverse the effect of opioids on the intestine to keep the bowel moving. Training your pelvic muscles. Biofeedback training involves working with a therapist who uses devices to help you learn to relax and tighten the muscles in your pelvis. Relaxing your pelvic floor muscles at the right time during defecation can help you pass stool more easily. During a biofeedback session, a special tube, catheter, to measure muscle tension is inserted into your rectum. The therapist guides you through exercises to alternately relax and tighten your pelvic muscles. A machine will gauge your muscle tension and use sounds or lights to help you understand when you've relaxed your muscles. Surgery may be an option if you have tried other treatments and your chronic constipation is caused by a blockage, rectocele or stricture. For people who have tried other treatments without success and who have abnormally slow movement of stool through the colon, surgical removal of part of the colon may be an option. Surgery to remove the entire colon is rarely necessary. Many people use alternative and complementary medicine to treat constipation, but these approaches have not been well studied. Researchers currently are evaluating the usefulness of acupuncture. What are good fiber sources? Foods moderate in fiber. Bread, whole wheat bread, granola bread, wheat bran muffins, nutri-grain waffles, popcorn. Cereal, bran flakes, raisin bran, shredded wheat, frosted mini wheats, oatmeal, muslix, granola, oat bran. All bran, bran buds, corn bran, fiber 1, 100% bran have high fiber. Vegetables, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, corn, green beans, green peas, acorn and butternut squash, spinach, potato with skin, avocado, fruits, apples with peel, dates, papayas, mangoes, nectarines, oranges, pears, kiwis, strawberries, applesauce, raspberries, blackberries, raisins, cooked prunes, dried figs have high fiber, meat substitutes, peanut butter, nuts, baked beans, black-eyed peas, garbanzo beans, lima beans, pinto beans, kidney beans, chili with beans, trail mix, Low-fiber foods include, high-fat foods, such as cheese, meat, and eggs. Highly processed foods, such as white bread, fast foods, chips, and other pre-made foods. Many health professionals consider yogurt with probiotics to be beneficial to colon health, and probiotics may help in treating constipation. However, consuming too much may lead to loose stools. Green bananas do have a higher starch and tannin content than bananas that are ripe and yellow. So a person may want to avoid eating less ripened bananas if they worsen their constipation symptoms. A diet heavy in starch, such as that which occurs in rice, may also give rise to constipation. When eating any type of food, even healthful ones, people should consider the amount they eat. They should check how their body reacts to certain foods, and to the overall balance of food groups. People should try to eat a diet that is healthful and well-balanced, which will help prevent or treat constipation. Such a diet should include a good balance of vegetables, legumes, fruits, and whole grains, which contain vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Staying well hydrated and physically active will also help prevent or relieve constipation. Constipation is a common occurrence that can result from dietary habits, medical conditions, and a range of other factors. If possible, it is best to resolve it using home remedies, such as eating more fiber, drinking more water, and getting regular exercise. If a person has severe symptoms or discomfort, if constipation comes on suddenly, or if symptoms get worse, they should speak to their doctor.